Have you ever wondered if the Pharaoh's curse, an ancient warning from the depths of time, is a truth or a mere myth? The Pharaoh's curse, a term that evokes chills and curiosity alike, is a concept steeped in the rich tapestry of ancient Egyptian culture. This supposed curse is believed to befall anyone who dares to disturb the eternal rest of the pharaohs, the godlike rulers of ancient Egypt, by trespassing into their sacred burial tombs. The genesis of the curse itself is as enigmatic as the civilization that birthed it. Many believe it to be an integral part of ancient Egyptian belief systems, a final protective measure for the pharaohs in their journey to the afterlife. Yet no definitive evidence of such a curse exists in ancient Egyptian texts. The notion of the curse as we know it today, ironically, might be more a product of modern fascination with the ancient world than an authentic ancient Egyptian belief. Over the years, the Pharaoh's curse has captured the global imagination, transforming from a chilling folklore into a subject of serious investigation. The allure of ancient Egypt, with its grand pyramids, enigmatic hieroglyphs and majestic rulers has always been irresistible. The pharaohs, in particular, have been the subject of awe and intrigue. They were not mere rulers, but were considered divine entities, intermediaries between the gods and the people. Their burial tombs were sacred spaces filled with treasures and intricate inscriptions detailing their journey to the afterlife. The concept of a curse protecting these tombs adds an extra layer of mystery and danger to the narrative. It implies a dire consequence for disturbing the divine order, a warning from the ancients that resonates through the millennia. Such a concept, wrapped in the shroud of the unknown, inevitably stirs the human curiosity. It is this blend of fear and fascination that has perpetuated the legend of the Pharaoh's curse. Now let's delve into the time when this curse first came into the limelight. The year was 1922, a time when the world was obsessed with the mystique of ancient Egypt. A fervor for all things pharaonic swept across the globe, and at the heart of this excitement was the British archaeologist Howard Carter, a man destined to etch his name into the annals of history. Imagine, if you will, the sweltering Egyptian desert. It's there, amidst the golden dunes of the Valley of the Kings, that Carter and his team toiled under the unforgiving sun. Their goal? To uncover the secrets of the ancient world, the lost tombs of the pharaohs, and the treasures they held. For years, Carter's quest had been fruitless. His ambitions met with nothing but sand and disappointment. But then, in November of that year, his luck took a dramatic turn. Beneath the earth, hidden for more than 3,000 years, the tomb of King Tutankhamun was waiting. When Carter first peered into the tomb's shadowy depths, he was met with a sight that left him breathless. Untold riches glittered in the gloom, their splendor undimmed by the passage of millennia. Statues of gold stood sentinel over the pharaoh's sarcophagus, their eyes gleaming with a timeless wisdom. Jewels of every hue sparkled amidst a sea of precious artifacts, their vibrant colors a testament to the artistry of a civilization long past. The discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb sent shockwaves around the world. Newspapers heralded the find as the archaeological discovery of the century, and the public was captivated by the prospect of unearthing new knowledge about the ancient Egyptians. The anticipation was palpable, a collective holding of breath as the world waited for what secrets the tomb might reveal. The joy and excitement of the discovery were overwhelming. It was a moment of triumph, a testament to human curiosity and perseverance. But what no one realized was that this joy would be short-lived. For amidst the treasures of the tomb there lurked a danger unseen, a threat whispered in hushed tones and cloaked in superstition. But little did they know that their joy would soon be overshadowed by fear. As the tomb creaked open, an ominous warning echoed from within. Now, imagine the scene. A heavy stone door, untouched for millennia, grinding against the silence of the tomb. As the dust of ages settled, the first thing to catch the eye was an inscription, deeply etched into the stone. A proclamation from the past, it read, Death will slay with his wings whoever disturbs the peace of the Pharaoh. This, my friends, was the legend of the Pharaoh's curse, a warning as eternal as the Pharaoh himself. Despite the chilling prophecy, 
The explorers were not deterred. After all, they were men of science, not superstition. The curse was dismissed as mere folklore, a relic of a bygone era steeped in mysticism and fear of the unknown. After all, who could believe that a warning from thousands of years ago could hold any truth in our modern world? But as the tomb's treasures were removed, as the pharaoh's rest was disturbed, an eerie sense of unease started to creep in. The once dismissive explorers started to report strange occurrences. Lights flickered without reason, tools disappeared only to reappear in unlikely places, and whispers echoed through the empty corridors of the tomb. Yet, they pressed on, dismissing these incidents as mere coincidences, figments of an overactive imagination. However, the skepticism began to wane when the first of them fell ill. A sudden, inexplicable sickness that seemed to defy all logical explanation. Then, one by one, others began to follow. Healthy men and women struck down in the prime of their lives. The dismissive laughter quietened, replaced by a growing sense of dread. Could it be that they had indeed invoked the wrath of the Pharaoh? Had they, in their hubris, ignored a warning from beyond the grave? This is where the legend of the curse started to take a more tangible form. The world watched, transfixed, as the curse seemingly came to life, as if the Pharaoh himself was exacting his revenge from beyond the veil of death. Soon, death started stalking those who dared to disturb the Pharaoh's eternal slumber. The first to fall was Lord Carnarvon, the man who funded the expedition. This wealthy Englishman, who had eagerly bankrolled Howard Carter's exploration of Tutankhamun's tomb, met his end in a rather unexpected manner. Just a few months after the tomb's sensational unsealing, Carnarvon succumbed to a mosquito bite infected by a razor cut. The world was shocked, but this was just the beginning. Grief soon struck the Carnarvon family again when Aubrey Herbert, Lord Carnarvon's half-brother, also passed away. His death, caused by blood poisoning after a dental procedure, was a mere five months after Carnarvon's. The coincidence was unsettling. Then there was George J. Gould I, a prominent American financier and railway executive. He visited the tomb in 1923 and fell sick soon after, dying of pneumonia in the French Riviera a few months later. His death further fanned the flames of fear and speculation. Arthur Cruttenden Mace, a member of Carter's excavation team, didn't escape the curse's grasp either. Two years after the tomb's discovery, Mace fell ill and passed away from arsenic poisoning. The list was growing. Radiologist Archibald Douglas Reed, who x-rayed Tutankhamun's mummy, died from a mysterious illness. A.C. Mace, an archaeologist who worked on the tomb, succumbed to arsenic poisoning. Even Carter's personal secretary, Richard Bethel, met a tragic end, found smothered in his bed. His father, Lord Westbury, driven to despair by his son's untimely death, leapt from his seventh-floor apartment. His note read, I really cannot stand any more horrors and hardly see what good I am going to do here, so I am making my exit. These misfortunes, one after another, sent shivers down the spine of society. Each death was different, yet they all had one thing in common a connection to the pharaoh's tomb. The public, the press, and even some scientists began to wonder, was this the curse of the pharaohs in action? The fear was palpable. The belief in the curse growing stronger with each passing day. Many started to question the wisdom of disturbing the pharaoh's eternal rest. Was this the price to pay for trespassing into the sacred realm of the dead? Yet amidst all this, Howard Carter, the man at the heart of it all, remained untouched. He lived for more than a decade after the tomb's opening, working diligently on his archaeological pursuits. This seemed to contradict the curse, adding another layer of mystery to the enigma of the Pharaoh's curse. The series of deaths and misfortunes that followed the opening of Tutankhamun's tomb were undeniably eerie. Was it mere coincidence? Or was there a more sinister force at play? The world was left to ponder. As the death toll rose, the world began to wonder if the Pharaoh's curse was indeed real. But was there a logical explanation behind these mysterious deaths? Over the years, scientists and researchers have proposed a variety of scientific theories to explain the so-called curse of the Pharaohs. 
One of these theories is the exposure to toxic fungi or bacteria. As the tombs were sealed for thousands of years, they became the perfect breeding ground for these dangerous organisms. When the tomb was opened, these organisms were released into the air, inhaled by the tomb raiders, and potentially causing illness or even death. Some researchers also proposed that the ancient Egyptians might have used toxic substances in the burial process. Materials such as arsenic, found in some of the paintings and artifacts within the tombs, could have contributed to the ill health of those who disturbed the pharaoh's rest. Another theory suggests the presence of radioactive substances in the tombs. Radon gas, a naturally occurring radioactive gas, can accumulate in enclosed spaces such as tombs. Long-term exposure to radon has been linked to lung cancer. This could explain the sudden and unexplained illnesses that befell those who dared to disturb the pharaohs. In addition, the psychological impact of entering a tomb believed to be cursed should not be underestimated. The power of suggestion can have a profound effect on the human body. This phenomenon, known as the nocebo effect, could have played a role in the perceived curse. The expectation of harm could have led to real physical symptoms and illness. These scientific theories, while providing plausible explanations, attempted to debunk the curse of the pharaohs. They sought to bring rationality to a realm dominated by superstition and fear. But science, like the ancient hieroglyphs, can only offer interpretations, not definitive answers. However, these explanations failed to quell the fear that had taken root in people's minds. The legend of the Pharaoh's curse, it seems, is as enduring as the pyramids themselves, standing the test of time and continuing to intrigue and mystify us to this day. So, is the Pharaoh's curse a truth or a myth? Now that's the million dollar question, isn't it? The debate about the Pharaoh's curse has been ongoing, with the scales tipping now this way, now that, but never quite settling. On one hand, we have the rationalists, the scientists, the skeptics. They argue that the curse is nothing more than a figment of our collective imagination, fueled by sensationalist media and our inherent fascination with the unknown. They point to the scientific explanations that we discussed in the previous scene, like the presence of toxic molds and bacteria in the sealed tombs, or the psychological impact of being in such a charged environment. But then, on the other hand, we have the believers. Those who, despite the scientific explanations, still hold fast to the belief in the curse. They point to the unexplained phenomena associated with the tombs of the pharaohs. The sudden and mysterious deaths, the inexplicable illnesses, the strange occurrences that seem to defy logic. They argue that not everything can be explained away by science, that there are forces at work that we may not fully understand. The debate rages on with neither side able to claim a decisive victory. The rationalists continue to search for scientific explanations, while the believers continue to point to the unexplained as proof of the curse. Perhaps the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Perhaps the curse is not a literal, supernatural force, but rather a psychological one. The power of suggestion, the weight of history, the fear of the unknown, these can all have a profound effect on the human mind and can manifest in very real physical symptoms. Or perhaps the curse is real, a remnant of ancient Egyptian magic, a warning from the pharaohs to those who would dare to disturb their eternal rest. The mystery of the pharaoh's curse continues to baffle us, a testament to the enduring allure of ancient Egypt. Who knows, maybe the pharaohs are having the last laugh after all. Whether truth or myth, the Pharaoh's curse has captured our imagination like few other tales from the past. This fascinating narrative, steeped in the mystique of ancient Egypt, has held us in its thrall, sparking intrigue and debate across the ages. We began our journey delving into the enigma of the Pharaoh's curse, exploring the legend that has haunted the annals of history. The discovery of the tombs, a seminal moment, brought the legend into the limelight, as the world watched in awe and trepidation. The unveiling of the curse, with its eerie pronouncements and dire predictions, further heightened the sense of mystery and foreboding. As the curse took effect, claiming its victims in a chilling series of events, the legend of the Pharaoh's curse seemed to come alive, sending shivers down our spines. 
Yet amid the fear and fascination, we also explored the scientific explanations that sought to demystify the curse. From deadly fungi to toxic gases, these theories offered a rational perspective, challenging the supernatural narrative. In the penultimate scene, we pondered the question, truth or myth? We examined the evidence, weighed the arguments, and considered the possibilities. Yet, definitive answers eluded us, leaving us to grapple with the enigma. And now, as we draw to a close, we realize that the enduring fascination with the Pharaoh's curse lies not in its resolution, but in its enduring mystery. It continues to captivate us because it embodies the allure of the unknown, the thrill of the unexplained. It's a testament to our inherent curiosity, our insatiable desire to unravel the secrets of the past. The Pharaoh's curse, with its blend of history, mystery and drama, is a compelling narrative that transcends time and culture. It invites us to ponder, to question, to imagine. It's a story that, like the pyramids themselves, stands as an enduring testament to the mesmerizing power of ancient Egypt. In the end, the curse of the pharaohs remains an enigma, a tale from the sands of time that continues to intrigue and bewilder us.